Hey everyone, it's Bill here again with part 16 of my Piano for Beginners series. As I always say, if you're new to the series, remember to check out the playlist link in the description text down underneath this video. Just bear in mind that if you're watching on mobile or on tablet, you might just need to tap to expand that text. Now, hopefully you've all been working away scratching your heads at Minuet in G, which we learned in tutorial 15. And I want you to keep working on that piece because as I said when we were going through it, it's really designed to challenge you. So keep plugging away at it. In today's tutorial, we're gonna ease up slightly and learn a new type of exercise that you can mix in with your scales. And what I'm talking about is a broken chord exercise. <laughs> Yeah, broken chords are really great for warm-ups and hand strength and things like that, but they're also really, really, really useful for learning chord shapes and kind of really embedding them in your brain. And chord shapes are absolutely essential as you begin to expand your understanding of music theory and your skill on the piano keyboard. Let's get going. Okay, before we can start messing around with broken chord exercises, we just need to understand what chords are and how we construct them on the piano keyboard. Now, I know quite a few of you who are following this series also watch my other tutorials on YouTube on, you know, piano improvisation, jazz piano, stuff like that. If you're one of those guys, you probably already have a pretty good idea of what a chord is. But just in case, I want to go through the basic concept of chords briefly now, so I know that we're all starting from the same place. Now, most pieces of music in the Western musical tradition, whether it's Beethoven or Britney Spears, have an underlying harmony that's kind of, if you like, the foundation of the piece. Now, how different types of music build up that harmony kind of varies. To put it in very, very simplified terms, classical music tends to construct harmonies from, from different textures, different melodies and counter melodies, and kind of arrive at a harmonic structure that's driven by the musical themes and, and, and the, the melodies, yeah? Pop music tends to have um, a clearer division between melody and harmony and a more kind of obvious and planned harmonic structure. But however, harm, however a harmonic structure is arrived at, it's usually expressed in terms of chords, which are groups of three or more notes sounding at the same time. So if I play a simple tune like When the Saints Go Marching In, I can put the melody in the right and the chords in the left. So what I'm playing down there are the chords of the song, the harmonies that underpin the melody. Now how we come up with chords and give them their names and such like is a big topic. and I've covered it in other tutorials on my YouTube channel, so I'm not gonna go into it in detail now. For the purposes of this tutorial, we're just gonna learn four chords and we're gonna learn them in what we call triad form. Now for the next minute or two, I'm just gonna be kind of slightly bombarding you with with notes and fingerings and don't worry if you lose track of what I'm saying because I've written everything down in this in this tutorials accompanying PDF okay so as usual look in the description field underneath the video find the download page and download the PDF for tutorial 16 there because everything all the notes and fingerings that I'm going to talk about are written out there so for the purposes of this tutorial, we're just gonna learn four chords, and we're gonna learn them in what we call triad form. Now the first chord we're gonna look at is the chord of C major, which we usually just call C. Now a chord of C is always made up of the notes C, E, and G in any combination. So any combination of Cs, Es, and Gs that you play on the piano keyboard is always a chord of C. It doesn't matter how many of each note you play, it doesn't matter where you play them, as long as you've got C's, E's and G's, excuse me, and nothing else, then it is a chord of C. But when we play C as a triad, we do something different. We play just one instance of each of those three notes and we play them as close together as possible. That limits us. It means basically we only have three different shapes we can play. This shape, C, E, G. This shape, E, G, C. Or this shape, G, C, E. 
yeah and, and and that's our lot we run out of options yeah those are the only ways we can play a C major triad we can play them in any octave on the keyboard yeah but it's still the same basic shapes now when we play a C triad with C as the lowest note we say it's in root position when E is the lowest note we say the triad is in first inversion and when G is the lowest note, we say the triad is in second inversion. Root position, first inversion, second inversion. The same goes for all major and minor triads. Okay, now I've constructed that C major, basic C major triad by taking, if you think about the scale of C major, by taking the first, third, and fifth notes of the scale. Okay, and in root position, I've got the first note of the scale as the lowest note. In first inversion, I've got the third note of the scale as the lowest note. And in second inversion, I've got the fifth note of the scale as the lowest note. And that works, as I say, across all major and minor chords. So if we think about um, a chord of a triad of G major, here's our G major scale, and we've got the first, third, and fifth notes. Yeah, so root position, first inversion, second inversion, and back to root position. Now, the one thing you could do at this stage, just to get these chord shapes under your hand, is to take that C major triad and just run it up and down the piano keyboard, quite slowly, just like this, just getting a feel for how it works. Yeah, both in right hand and in left hand. Yeah. And these aren't broken chords that we're playing now, by the way. We're going to come on to those in a second. This is just about getting those shapes under your hands. I want you just to look at the fingers that I'm using. Yeah. Now, usually when we play chords on the piano keyboard, we can be fairly kind of fast and loose with our fingers. We have a fair amount of discretion. But when we're playing broken chords, we're quite strict about the fingers that we use because that makes things easier for us. Now, in the right hand, I'm playing the root position chord with one, three, and five. The first inversion with one, two, and five. I could use three, but it's just a bit of an awkward stretch between the G and the C there. So one, two, five is easier. Then for the second inversion, I'm back to one, three, five. So one, three, five, one, two, five, one three five and as i say all of these things are written down all scored out in the pdf so don't worry too much about memorizing them now in the left hand it's just slightly different first in um, sorry root position we've got one three five first inversion is also one three five but then the second inversion is one two five again it's about dealing with that big stretch between the g and the c yeah, so as I say, for now, just run those chords up and down the piano keyboard, those triads, and if you can, stick to the position of the, the fingerings that I've been talking about. So let's play a C broken chord in the right hand over two octaves. You'll see that what I'm doing is just cycling through the root position and then, then the two inversions of the triad going from bottom to top, yeah? And then adding that C at the top to give it a feeling of completeness. So we've got root position, first inversion, second inversion, root position, first inversion, second inversion, and then the C at the top just to finish off. And then coming down, second inversion, first inversion, root position, second inversion, first inversion, root position, yeah? And the fingering, again, I'm just varying it slightly to bring the second onto the G in the first inversion. So I'm going one, three, five, one, two, five, one, three, five, one, three, five, one, two, five, one, three, five. And the same coming down, just reversed, okay? Now in the left hand, it's the same, but the fingers are just a little bit different because as we saw, it's the second inversion where we're using our second. 
531 531 521 531 531 5212 and coming down So have a go at those. Remember, everything's scored out in the PDF, so if you need to look up notes and fingers, that's fine. For now, don't worry about putting them hands together. Just practice them hands separately, okay? We can look at um, broken chords hands together at a later stage, but for now, I just want you to focus on doing them hands separately. Okay, so that's C major broken chord dealt with. Let me just give you a few more to get your teeth into. Don't worry if you feel a bit overloaded trying to master these right away, just focus on C to start with. Now the ones that I'm gonna get you started with are G, A minor, and E minor, because like C, those broken chords use nothing but white notes, and we can use exactly the same fingerings as we do for C, okay? Um, once again, they're written out in the PDF and just by the by, by way of interest, you'll see a really interesting thing in the PDF. Because broken chords use a, a, a big range of the piano keyboard, okay, even if you just play a couple of octaves, I've had to include some clef changes in the staves, okay? So, um, for example, G broken chord, I think I've um, started in bass clef, but then made a change to treble clef to take it up here, okay? And you can do that, you can put a clef change in, into the right hand, you know, the right hand can play bass clef. Um, it's just about making the scoring as clear, clear as possible. I've added a note to the PDF about that. It's just a, an interesting thing for you to pick up about scoring. So let's have a look at G major. There's our G major triad, G, B, D, root position, first, third, and fifth notes of the G major scale, first inversion, second inversion, and if we run the broken chord up, it's exactly the same fingers as C, 1, 3, 5, 1, 2, 5, 1, 3, 5, 1, 3, 5, 1, 2, 5, 1, 3, 5, coming back down again. same as uh, same fingering as C okay a minor and E minor I'm not going to play through I'm going to let you work out the actual broken chords for yourselves okay I'll just show you the triads there's our A minor triad, A, C, and E. Okay, so first, thir um, third, and fifth notes of the A minor scale. First inversion, second inversion. Okay, same fingering as um, uh, C major. Yeah, so work out the broken chord from that. It's written out in the PDF if you can't quite figure it out. E minor, there's our E minor triad, E, G, and B. I'll let you figure out the inversions and the broken chord for yourself. If you want to cheat a little bit, it is written out in the PDF. As with your scales, what you're really aiming for with broken chords is evenness of touch, smoothness, fluidity, musicality. Just don't just kind of don't don't just kind of bash them out any old how. Try to give them shape, phrasing, and really work on the evenness. It's really really hard to get it perfect. You know, I, I struggle to get it perfect. But as with your scales, that kind of smoothness and evenness is an ideal to aim for. One final important point, because broken chords involve a little bit of stretching, don't practice them when you're coming in absolutely cold. The best order to do things is scales, then broken chords, then your pieces that you're working on, because so you're gradually expanding the amount of stretching that you're doing. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. What I want you to do is keep practicing all your scales, drop in some of those broken chords, keep working away at your pieces, especially minuetting G from tutorial 15, which I really hope is making you sweat. <laughs> yeah, because that's what it's supposed to do. As ever, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out my Facebook and Twitter, links in the description field below, and maybe consider supporting my Patreon crowdfunding campaign at www.patreon.com slash Bill Hilton. Running this channel is pretty much my main business these days, so any support you can offer, even if it's just kind of two or three dollars a month, is very welcome. I'll see you next time.